Hi, my name's Dan and I'm the Public Engagement Manager for University College London Research Centre called the Welcome EPSRC Centre for Interventional and Surgical Sciences. It's a bit of a mouthful, so we call it WISE. Um, and basically what we're here to do is to bring together um, different people from across experiences and disciplines to try and create better ways of doing surgery. And that's in the planning, in the doing and also the monitoring afterwards. We work across a wide range of um, applications and medical areas, uh, one of those being operative birth, which is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Um, operative birth is basically any type of childbirth which requires um, additional assistance. So that might be through, say, C-section or forceps or von twos, um, and there's a range of different other methods. Um, and I'm working with our operative birth team, led by Demetrios Siasakis, who is a clinician, which means that he's both a medical professional who works in a hospital, but also does research. And his team have two other clinicians, Brian and Shireen, and an engineering PhD student um, who works on sensors called Carmen, who um, we'll be talking to in a second. The reason for this video is because I've been working with a group on something called PPI, which is public and patient involvement. It's basically the ways in which we can um, create, design, apply research um, together with the people who are affected by the areas that we're working in. So it's the recognition that engineers are expert in one thing, our clinicians are expert in another, but also those who have gone through the experiences that we're trying to improve are also experts in their area. So we bring everyone together so that we can develop um, the best research um, which has the best real world impact. To do that, we're setting up um, a parent group which will meet regularly to inform our research and push how that we how we do this to make sure that it's relevant and it's applied. We had um, our second ever meeting in November uh, 2020, where almost 20 parents um, joined our research team of four and our community consultant called Emily um, to discuss the work that we're doing around how MRI medical imaging and um, something microsensors, which sounds very futuristic, um, can help with the way that we do operative birth. It was a really great meeting and we wanted to share some of the effects that it had on our researchers themselves with you all. So um, what I'm going to be doing now is talking to um, Carmen, who I mentioned earlier, who's one of our engineering PhD students at Weiss, and she's going to be talking about what she does, how she found the group and what she'll be doing with the different insights that we got over that two hour meeting, which we conducted online, like I say, back in November. So I'm now going to magically switch over to our interview with Carmen. Um, if you're interested in joining the parent group or you're one of our members and you want to have any further questions, please do get in touch. Uh, my email is in the comments, which should be underneath here. Um, we are looking to do much more of this in 2021 and are currently planning some really exciting work with our parents, with Emily and with the rest of the research team. So um, thank you. I'll now switch over to Carmen and myself. So hi, Carmen. Thank you for joining us. Um, I think as a, as a good starting point, can you introduce yourself and let us know what your research is in relation to um, the project? Hi, Dan. So uh, thank you for the introduction. My name is Carmen and I'm part of the Nano Engineered Systems Lab of UCL. I'm doing my second year of my PhD now. And the work I do is essentially around tactile self-powered sensors for healthcare. So this is how I tie into the project. Thank you. And um, for anyone who doesn't know, because I've also been on a learning journey, Nano Engineered Systems means basically working on on things in a really small, tiny, tiny scale. So Commons works around making the smallest, well, making small sensors or sensors using small things. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, good. Um, so on that topic, how does that work relate to um, you know, operative birth? Yeah, so um, essentially my group, so the Nanoengineered Systems Lab, works in collaboration with a number of clinicians uh, that Dan mentioned before. So um, Shireen, Anna, Dimitrios, Brian. And we started working in collaboration with them in order to make operative birth uh, safer and more comfortable in a way. So by using sensors. 
And this is how I got involved as well, actually. So by starting my PhD in this lab group, I eventually got involved um, because of the way my sensors can be useful for such an application. Great. And then, um, and then you came to present on them at the parent group. So I suppose one question is, how did you get involved in the parent group itself? And what did you hope to get from being involved? So I actually had never been to any of these PPI events before. So I wasn't sure what to expect, but I was very excited for it since um, uh, Shireen and the rest of the clinicians let me know about it. And they asked me if um, I thought it, it would be a good idea to join since um, the engineering work, which is what I'm involved in, um, is more on the device of these sensors and adding the capabilities to them and the functionalities. So being able to see what the patients actually are comfortable with or actually think would be helpful, since this application at the end of the day is to make the labor more comfortable and safe for them, um, is very useful, since that way all of the research work I'm doing can be targeted to that specifically, which is the end goal of the project itself. So um, so you say this was the first one that you've ever been to and presented at. So, um... How did you find that experience of your first group taking part and presenting on a research yeah. topic to parents? Yes, yeah, so to be fair, it actually went beyond my expectations in everything because it was the first time I saw um, our research in a real life application and how it could effectively help people. And I heard it firsthand. So, so yeah, being in, um, in the engineering sort of academic work, world, I was never able to see this before. So by taking part, I think I got a lot of learning on how our research and products can actually help and how to focus everything towards that uh, goal. So, so yeah, it definitely went beyond what I was expecting and I, and I would love to take part again. Amazing. So um, you talk about um, uh, you know, getting those insights. So I suppose my next question would be, what, what are the, the main insights that you heard back from parents on the day? Yeah, so focusing on the engineering side of things, so what I'm working in, on, like back in the lab, uh, the main insights I got, um, which were incredibly helpful, were around the actual design of the concepts of the sensors. So, for example, to give you an idea, um, the final conclusion was that um, everyone and all the patients preferred a design that was as um, unobtrusive as possible. However, they did let us know that in ter terms of how it felt when applying it on the patients, they would be okay with any sort of texture, but to focus very much on the visual side of it. So this is something we're going to take on. Um, we're going to take on very seriously when designing it, because this was the main concern in terms of the in terms of the actual design. On the other hand, though, uh, a very interesting insight from it was um, new ideas in terms of research paths to follow for this application. So the sensors uh, that we're working on can have a number of functionalities, which can range from detecting some sort of movement or of heat or of pressures. So by speaking to the, to the patients, we were able to see what would be the most helpful or what they would find uh, best for this uh, for this application, essentially. Mm. So in terms of the engineering side of things, I think those kind of insights were were priceless, basically. Yeah. yeah. And so it also sounds like there's really clear, you, you quite clearly know what you're going to do with those going forward as well and how they'll be applied. Yeah. Um, um, so my next question is about, you know, you've talked already about some of this, but what would you say was kind of one or two of your favorite things about taking part in this group as a first experience? Yeah, so I think my favorite thing was definitely the boost of motivation I got from this event in order to continue working hard on this project and in all the research projects in general, to be fair, uh, because it made me see how welcomed all this, these ideas were. So not only did the patients feel comfortable, with um with these kind of sensors but they also actually preferred them to what is happening now so th they said that um these sensors uh would make it safer and that's why they welcome it um, very strongly and also it would maybe prevent numerous examinations taking place 
So overall, they were just um, very encouraging about it, about it all. That really did give me a lot of motivation. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting it to such extent. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's something which is really interesting. So I'm not, I'm from non-scientific background. So when I came to WISE, it's something which I never really thought about the amount of time we spend developing technologies, but actually you know, it's in a lab and it's a bit separate. And so, you know, the PPI, which I've done with your group and others, it's really interesting to see those two come together and how that helps both mm -hmm. sides reach an understanding. Yeah. Um, Definitely. So on the other side of the coin, this is also the first time that you've done this. So um what did you find more difficult and what will you kind of you know, what would you like to work on for next time so i think what i found uh, most difficult was um hearing about the complicated experiences in real life so um and firsthand from the patients i had never heard about the actual complications and how around the sensitive topic uh, the stories are so i think taking part uh, did really help for future sort of PPI events, since it's given me more of an understand an understanding of the real life situation of this um, of this issue we're trying to help with, and also it did give um, the group as a whole an idea to maybe create um, some kind of event or support afterwards for someone which may feel affected by telling these stories. So I think that was very useful in those regards as well. So it made us think about um, some kind of support after the PPI event as well. Yeah, and you know, I was also part of those conversations and definitely, you know, like you say, we were talking afterwards about how we, how we make sure people feel supported, particularly when it's like a digital event, when you yeah. don't, you know, you just disappear straight away um, afterwards and there's no one there. So yeah, it's something which, you know, you and I and all of us are going to be working really um, closely on when we think about how we plan the next meetings. Um, and talking about the next meetings, so the last thing is is our next steps. So in terms of um, your next steps, in terms of how you apply the things that you've learned into research, you've talked about how you will, but what are the kind of next concrete steps for the research itself? Because I know that these timescales can be sometimes really, really quick, sometimes it can be years. So kind of what are, yeah. what are the timescale with this? Um, so before talking about the time scale, I guess the two main things we are now focusing on is uh, one, finalizing the design from the engineering side based on all the feedback we got. Um, so that's one thing. And then another thing we are working on um, together with the whole group is to fill in an ethics form, which is now in process. and. Thanks to this, we will be able to eventually use these sensors on patients. So this is very important for us. And for this, we also wanted to set up an, a new BPI event to get even more feedback uh, on more details to make sure that everything is under control and everyone is comfortable with, with everything. And in terms of the time scale, as you said, I am not 100% sure uh, since I've never done one of these ethics applications, etc. But however, um, we are hoping to maybe start the tests on patients if everything goes fine with the ethics form and within our own time, time, time frame uh, by the beginning of next year, maybe. Okay. And what, what is an ethics form for people who don't know? What, why, yeah. do, why do we do those? It's this document we must fill in to make sure that everything is going to be safe and there's not going to be any repercussions on the patients whatsoever by carrying out these tests so so yeah for example um we just need to put in all these legal standards about the materials and make sure that all the tests regarding um their use on human tissue are approved and and yeah basically all around the safety of it and then yeah this is why actually uh, we want to also carry out another ppi event with the group in order to go through this form of it, just to make sure that detail by detail, um, everyone's comfortable with it and they would find it um, okay to carry out. Yeah. So we would really like love the feedback again on this. And um, and yeah, like you say, in terms of the next um, parent groups that we're running, um, it's something where we were hoping to get them started early in this new year, 
But of course, um, we've had a second big wave of COVID, so our clinicians are back on frontline service, but we're still working on planning these. And um, we're hoping to start them off again around the end of February, early March, um, so that we can work with all the parents involved to figure out how these should look going forward, and also to work on the research of so things like the ethics application um, and all of the great work that the group are doing. Um, and of course, we'll be in touch with everyone about that, and Carmen will. Um, still be involved. I'm very glad to hear that she's interested in staying involved. Um, and yeah, I mean, the last thing for me to say is thank you, Carmen, for your time. Um, and thank you to everyone in the group who took part. Um, is there anything which you'd like to say um, to finish things off, Carmen? Um, no, so I just wanted to say as well that thank you so much to everyone that was involved, because without you, we wouldn't be able to have this sort of insight and feedback, which um, like particularly me, I've never been in touch with and I've never had the opportunity to, to receive this kind of feedback. So I'm very excited for the, for the next session since it's already proved to be incredibly helpful for me. So, so yeah, I just want to say thank you again and I'm, I can't wait to, for the next PPI event. Yeah.